Now call your mama because I'm about to make your when I Good morning after evening my beautiful people my name is All Night and we're here the Godzilla Nemesis DLC 2 pack is upon us for Gigabash The trailer is out there it is in the wild we got to react to it I'm an action Get there All right Oh oh Okay that's her that's his ultimate Hidora poop man poop man wait Oh Okay a body. Ah, oh, a body slam. That's cute. There's the man. There's our man. Ah, oh, man. They always put so much love into those trailers. As as brief as they are. Well, then. All right. We got to run it back. We're going to run it back. We're going we're gonna to quiet it down for a hot minute. So first off with Ghidorah, we can clearly see Ghidorah. All right. Definitely have. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. All right. Too fast. Calm down. All right. Quarter speed here. Let's, let's, let's bump it up a little bit. All right. So Ghidorah definitely has, obviously... Uh, some flight involved here. We see a, a nice wide spread for that lightning breath. So that's gonna be it's gonna be a little annoying to deal with. Actually, that takes up a fair amount of of space. That does remind me of uh, Destroya's air special, where she kind of you know shoots down. Uh, so similar idea here, kind of mini flight going on. It's hit, it's hitting multiple monsters. You can see that there. Looks like we have a little drop kick move that. Check this though. It's a drop kick move that pops them up into the air. That's a unique that that's something that only the the ultras get, like Ultraman and maybe even Gigaman as well. Um, you don't see that on the other monsters. So a, a nice pop up maneuver here. That's that's pretty. That's nice. That's nice for Ghidorah to have. Okay, this is definitely a guard special. Maybe maybe his guard light. Maybe it's this kind of force fieldy type of thing it stuns it stuns that's okay all right we like it we like it and we have of course a try attack hitting all of the monsters on the field this could be Ghidorah's ult uh you know when you get the giga orb on stage could be his ultimate that could be yeah no it, oh man it's it's hitting them for a lot it's hitting them for a lot that has to be his ultimate I hope that's his ultimate and then, of course, we have uh, uh, Space Godzilla, guys. Yeah. Look at him go in his classic spaceship form. That's Space Godzilla. Here comes Hedora. Here he comes. Or she. Did you guys know Hedora's a she? I just found this out as well. That's a bitch right there. Okay. So we definitely have a dashy move of some sort. All right. All right. We have a pummel. That's definitely... Hedora's uh, special. Now, take note here. Hold up, hold up, frame by frame, frame by frame, frame by frame. You can actually see here, after performing the special, uh, uh, the enemy monster here is taking damage over time, even after the grab attack has concluded. See the giga energy that's, that's coming off of her there. That maybe tells me that Hedora comes with a with a debuff mechanic that, that you know, is just general damage over time. That's pretty cool. Now let's see here. We've got, ooh, ooh, okay. All right, the spaceship form going right through. So hold up. If I'm understanding, okay. Yeah, that look. That looks like the, ch well, whatever his charge special move would be. Looks like you charge it up, you head on through. Now, no, okay, okay. So it doesn't have super armor. I was almost like, does it have super armor? We got a big old floppy move. Give me a hug, Giga Boy. I love that. I love that so much. And yeah, definitely the original versions. This is absolutely Hidora's Showa appearance, not in line with the Final Wars design. That's fine. And then, of course, Ghidorah, kind of a more classic 90s, definitely Heisei era design. And then we got my boy facing off now you would think that this would be the part of the trailer where they show off potential skins if that's going to be a part of the two-pack unfortunately not uh, as far as i can see it's just heisei godzilla it is just heisei godzilla there he goes and there he goes and here comes Ghidorah. and these trailers look so dope every time so the Godzilla Nemesis DLC 2 coming to Gigabash is upon us. I am going to be diving right in, diving headfirst into it, checking out both Ghidorah and Hedorah, and giving you guys my thoughts on how they play and how this two-pack stacks up to all of the other DLC characters of Gigabash. 
I thank you guys so much for the love and support for all the Gigabash content. I will become the number one Gigabash content creator. <laughs> Believe it! The Gigabash Godzilla DLC 2, titled the Nemesis DLC, has finally arrived. In Gigabash's continuing mission to become the next true king of Godzilla fighting games, they have finally added both Hedorah and King Ghidorah to the game. Just like I've previously mentioned, this DLC pack is a two-pack rather than a four-pack. Though they're thankfully charging half the price for half the monsters, or at least almost half the price. Inflation's a bitch in it. The most interesting thing about this two-pack is that I could have sworn that King Ghidorah would have been an easy inclusion in the original Godzilla pack. But I think Passion Republic shares my sentiment that Destroya is a far better villain for Godzilla, despite having only appeared in one movie. That's right, KG stands. Fight me! No arms ain't got no bitches have an ass! Despite my preferences, I'm still happy to see more monsters get more love in this game. Especially Hedora, who hasn't seen a playable experience in any of the Godzilla Pipeworks games. Though apparently she was planned for Godzilla Unleashed before they scrapped her due to technical reasons? That's what you get for developing a game for hardware with the same processing power as a pistachio, so lesson learned, I guess. But hey, Hedorah is just as important to Godzilla's history as any other rival monster, so her inclusion is absolutely a welcome one. But how do these two stack up? Are these two victims of the fighting game DLC curse and just an overtuned, easy S-tier inclusion? Are they a successful expression of their themes and playstyles? Or do they suffer the same fate as Pipeworks monsters sharing the same playstyle over seven different monsters? None of y'all were brave enough to say it, so yeah, that's right. Fight me. Your god isn't real. Hey, 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 what's going on? Let's foot dive right in. Kicking off with King Ghidorah, cause boy does this three-headed freak love his kicks, I'd be lying if I said that Ghidorah's playstyle wasn't crazy fun. My favorite part about Gigabash's design fundamentals is that, despite this being a party fighting game a la Power Stone, the monsters still have immensely unique fighting styles. Even if two kaiju share a roughly similar silhouette, their playstyles will rarely line up one to one, and Ghidorah is no different. I would argue that this is potentially Gigabash's first aerial character. Here you had a jetpack and could hover for short periods, but Ghidorah's playstyle almost seems tailor made to hitting your enemies into the air and keeping them there for continued abuse and juggling. Though with Ghidorah's massive body and wings, while he prefers the skies and juggling opponents, I feel that his speed may be the one thing that holds him back from being outright broken. Speaking of broken... Can someone tell me if this move was tested? Like holy mother of god! Does this thing feel too good? Ghidorah's air light attack is... duh. A foot dive. Not only does this move kick up the opponent into the air, but it also combos with itself at least twice. In rare instances, you can actually line up some stupid angles to get even more kicks in. But how are you supposed to fight this thing? Am I just abusing AI here? I, I normally enjoy dogging on anything AI related, but this just feels cruel. I would have tested this in an online match, but it seems that even with crossplay turned on, there were exactly four of you playing at the time while I was recording, and you didn't want me in your lobby. What I do to you, huh? Is it my breath? Do I have the ugly? Why don't you answer my calls? Am I and I'm proud! I'm ugly and I'm proud! Is that what he calls it? Speaking of playing online, would any of y'all be interested in me hosting a stream where we can all play online together with the new characters and talk about them some more? Comment below and let me know and I'll throw something together. For any new friends just joining us for the first time, maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out on that stream when it happens. Outside of the obvious, Ghidorah is fun as heck, but I think in the right context and with the appropriate amount of guarding and good anti-air moves, he can be dealt with just fine. I would say a solid A tier in the Gigabash tier list. Tier list video when you may ask? <laughs> Stick around and maybe we'll talk about it, huh? Lastly, Ghidorah's alt skins seem to reference, uh, 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 
Smog, Safira, and Death Ghidorah. Moving on. She is the great mighty poo, and I fear copyright. How about you? Straight from the pantheon of obscure Showa monsters, Gabara Win Passion Republic comes the great mighty poo herself, Hidora. Also, if you're gonna get tired of the poop jokes, just know that I am still convinced that all of her alt skins are just different colors and variations of excrement. So until someone tells me otherwise, that's all I've got to go off of, all right? Hidora so is. She's, uh. This is, uh. That it, it, it is a problem. Again, the jury is still out on just how powerful one character can be over another. But Hidora feels oddly powerful. Like a Wooly or Skorak, it just feels like Hidora's moveset has a lot of answers to questions that other fighters can pose. A built-in counter that applies the damage over time, multi-hit moves for applying pressure in neutral, a beam attack for applying space, a move that allows you to not only fly to close the gap or run away, but also applies the damage over time. Did I forget to mention that a good 50% of her moveset applies this pollution debuff that causes damage over time? And as far as I can see in my experimentation, this debuff also stacks. Passion Republic, if this is meant to be a sign to reduce my carbon footprint, there are more subtle ways to punish me for my sins. <laughs> Again, in a vacuum, Hidora feels crazy good. This may just take some time to really assess just how good or bad she really is. Despite Hidora not being my playstyle or even remotely close to my favorite Godzilla villain, I can admit that she feels insanely good to pilot. Almost too good. Do, do, do health bars normally look like that? In any case, the Godzilla Nemesis DLC for Gigabash is a major win in my eyes. If the approach from here on out is two packs to get these DLCs out more frequently, I'm all the happier for it. And even happier to continue to cover these DLCs and talk about my new favorite kaiju brawler even more often now. But those were my thoughts on the Godzilla Nemesis DLC for Gigabash. Now that we know that the two packs are most likely going to be the standard moving forward, that just means that the Gigabash hype train ain't stopping here, and we're just going to continue to grow this roster bigger and bigger with more Kaiju love coming to the game. Looking to the future, I have one potential prediction that is just my personal dream prediction, and another one that's more realistic. My number one most wanted character at this point, in case I haven't made it obvious yet, is Space Godzilla. I think that if I were to structure a pack around Space Godzilla, I would do a two pack and have it be called the Godzilla Echoes DLC. You could potentially pair him up with either Orga or Biolante, given that both monsters used Godzilla's DNA to take form. Godzilla's DNA do be getting passed around like cheese balls at a Brazilian restaurant, so it kind of makes sense. However, if we're being realistic, I think that the next Godzilla DLC to kind of mirror this villain's DLC will most likely include a Godzilla Allies pack. I think this two pack has to include Mothra at some point. She is just far too an iconic monster to not include in this game at this point, but some others that I think could potentially pair up with her would include monsters like Rodan, Anguirus, or Jet Jaguar. If I wanted to spice up the roster just a little bit more, I would want to pair Mothra with Anguirus just so that we get a quadruped up in this roster. And our boy has not seen action in years, man. Hedora got her chance. Give Anguirus a shot. Let's not forget, though, that Godzilla is not the only franchise that gets included here. Obviously, with the Ultraman DLC, we know that other Toku franchises are on the table, so maybe more Ultraman goodness, maybe more Ultraman monsters, or just, you know, give Gamera a chance for Pete's sake, man! Nevertheless, the future of Gigabash is looking brighter than ever, and I can't thank you enough for joining me on this journey and enjoying all of the Gigabash content. My commitment to you is to cover this game from start to finish. As long as this game goes, I will continue to cover it. If there's any other Toku franchises or just anything else in general that you guys would love to see from the channel, comment below and let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. 
I love this game just as much as you guys have been loving the content, so rest assured we're going to keep it going from here on out. I do want to pull together a potential Giga Bash tier list video in the near future, so also comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are on a tier list video, what monsters would go where, and how we should break that down, whether we do that on stream or I just do it in a pre-recorded video. But that's all I had to say here today. Don't forget to like the video, show the algorithm some love, subscribe for more content, and as always, I've been your host all night. And do not forget to stay loved, keep loving, and have a wonderful night.